Let's take a look at the Carsho Sandmaster 2.0 and all you got to supply yourself is your own charger and battery with a Dean's connector. It's an entry level kit so what better than to let a couple of kids drive it and give us their opinion. In the leg. I'll also give some feedback from my perspective as a hobbyist and a parent who might consider buying this for their child. So let's see how this goes. In the woods I raked away as many loose sticks on the ground as I could using my feet and grabbed a few more substantial sticks to act as gates to mark out the track. First up is my son's friend, a total novice but after a brief tutorial she was ready to go. Perhaps I should have taught her a little bit more about throttle control. Yeah, sure. Can you cut that bit out? No problem. When choosing an RC car, it's important to consider what terrain that you're going to be driving it on most. Bigger wheels and more ground clearance would be better here, but surprisingly, it did well for a two-wheel drive buggy. Until you don't stick to the track that I spent ages prepping. That's why I cleared all that bit. Those, when you're on the sticks, it's a nightmare. Can I do that again? Yeah, what's again? Second go around the track was better, and she seemed to be really enjoying herself. Then all of a sudden, we needed to call the chief mechanic. Maintenance. Close. Back it up. There she goes, heading towards the final gate, full throttle. Boom! Another gate post taken out. Top points for accuracy. After a while, they wanted to go and run around the woods with walkie talkies, and they came back later wanting to drive the car again. But right now, that gives me a chance to have a drive. Andy Robinson RC sent this over, so a massive thanks to him for making this happen. Come on, it'd be rude not to chase the kids with it. That's standard issue. Andy's removed the 27 tooth plastic motor pinion, replacing it with a metal 22 tooth. This means we've got faster acceleration but we don't get the max speed that the buggy is capable of. But that was all he had to hand. And it didn't really matter till later on in the video when we changed location and needed the extra speed to clear the tabletop on a large jump. But we ended up finding another jump that worked a treat, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, back to the here and now. I'm impressed with the transmitter and I could easily drive one-handed. It's a good fit in the hand for kids and adults alike. Although tell the kids that the dials are for adjusting the settings and that you've already dialed them in so they don't need to fiddle with them. This is something I forgot and they changed some settings and it took me a minute to realise why it was no longer able to go in reverse. How do you reverse? The buggy is way more fun than I expected. There's something about an RC which is in between toy and hobby grade. You don't really expect much but when it actually drives alright you just want to push it to its limit. Look how it ploughs straight through those thick dry leaves without any issues. I'm telling you, it really does test my fitness making these running videos. The cars are always faster than I am, causing me to get a proper sweat on. So at least give me a thumbs up if you respect the effort. Now check this out for a dramatic stop to pose for the camera. Skills. That's something for the kids to aspire to. Quick break to sharpen some sticks. So rounding off day one, a quick drive on the gravel path for a cinematic wheel spin before the kids give their opinion and then we move on to a new spot with jumps. So let's go live to roundabout reviews for the verdict. Colour? 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Fun? 10 out of 10. Fun was 10 out of 10? Yes. Ari, would you rate it? Seven out of ten. Fun. Eleven out of ten. I didn't even know that was an option. No, you can only get out of ten. Do you really like it? Yeah. Day two. This is when things get a bit more serious and we act like proper pros. Me and the boy hit one of our favourite spots and it might be familiar to some of you as we've filmed here before. Every year it changes a little bit. Trees fall, new ramps are made or old ones destroyed as it's a popular spot for mountain biking. 
The surface is hard and there's a lot of flintstones embedded in the ground as well as plenty sitting loose on the surface. You are going to see the buggy hit them now and again which bumps it into the air. There isn't a lot of ground clearance on this buggy, just 28mm and all the weight is at the back and you're going to hear it slap the chassis on landing so a jump with a good transition suits it best which is why we wanted a bit more speed with that 27 tooth pinion here not sure it would have cleared it but it would have given it a better chance still loads of fun though and we moved to another area soon and found a perfect jump for it and you're going to love it I did anyway yeah the buggy's noisy and the spur gear could be of a better quality as Andy points out in his review but we've had loads of fun and my son said it was tough and he didn't have to worry about cracking the body shell like on some of my other RCs. In a ditch. After driving a lot of two wheel drive buggies in these woods, I know that it can be tricky to stay on track. But look how he drives in a straight line right from the top of that hill way over there all the way to me on this other side. Now this is my favourite part of the day. He's up at the top of that hill, pelts it down past me hitting a jump and then carries on ripping it around. Love it. That was the perfect jump for it. Now we know the kids love driving it, but let me give you a bit of my feedback. Cosmetically, I felt like the roll cage looked a bit too thick and that it's also missing a cross member at the back to finish off the cage. Although I have just finished building a Tamiya fast attack vehicle which looks really scale, so that probably makes it a little bit more obvious to me. In fact, the ground clearance on this is very similar to the FAV, the FAV is 30mm whilst this is 28mm. Now these are my main gripes with this buggy. The plastic beadlock wheels are a pain. After a couple of battery packs you'll find yourself needing to reseat the tyres and to do that you're going to want a 1.5mm hex drive. You may need to replace these wheels over time as the bead is very flimsy so that is something worth thinking about. The rear suspension is really bouncy and the spring rate is so stiff. I put thicker oil in but it hasn't made much of a difference and a softer spring might help but then it would bottom out so I think we're just going to have to accept it is what it is because fitting longer shocks would affect the angle of the dog bones and then you're just going to end up getting binding. The battery tray is a bit fiddly and that might clog up with dirt making it even more difficult to release but an old toothbrush should clear it out okay and you're going to need an old toothbrush anyway to clean the mud out of the beadlock screws on the wheels if you're going to be able to get your 1.5mm hex drive in. All that considered, it took a good beating by the kids and they both rated it highly. And all of my niggles aside, I can honestly say this brought a lot of smiles and excitement and what else do you want from an RC car? Just be aware of the issues and weigh up the pros and cons by considering how and where the kids are going to be driving it. If you think they want to jump it, then you'd be better off looking at something with more ground clearance. But if not, turn the steering rate down a bit so it isn't so aggressive and you've got a robust buggy that handles well.